Hi, my name is Paula Reed and I'm a machine quilter and I'm always looking for fun and easy ways to have put a lot of impact in my quilts. The quilts I have out in front of me are done with a technique known as trapunto. It's an Italian technique and it was first done in embroidery. And to duplicate the beautiful raised look of trapunto, people used to cut holes in the back of their quilts. They would stuff batting or wool scraps or something like that into those little holes and then sew them up with a hand needle. The problem with that is that when they were finished, they had a brand new damaged quilt. They couldn't wash them. They were just kept for show. So the next way that we, we were always trying to make this easier. And one of the ways I found was using water soluble thread to attach batting to the back. But then you'd have to sit for hours and cut away extra batting. Now with the electronic cutting machines, this is such an easy technique and it just makes it so much fun. This is the sample that I'm going to do for you today. I have um, cut out some pieces, but I'm going to show you how you can do it. The first thing that I did is using a marker. I mark the silhouette of the pattern of my rose pattern onto this sheet and I'm going to scan it using the scan feature on the machine. So I'm going to touch scan, then I'm going to touch direct cut because I'm going to be cutting the batting. Then I'm going to push start and it will scan the flower into the machine. Then when it's done doing that, I already have batting on another mat and so it can go ahead and cut the batting. The batting that I have used is the high loft polyester batting. So I can take this out. And then I can put this one in and I've already set it up for my cutting. Cut and go. Got the green light. There we go. And it's gonna cut out my flower for me. Now I already have one cut out, so we can cut while I'm playing. So I'm going to take my pattern that I've already traced. And you can get these patterns. You can do it from a coloring book. You can do it from a stencil. I'm gonna turn it over to the back and I'm gonna spray it. And I'm gonna fit my flower to the back. There we go. I'm just gonna press that on. No cutting. I'm gonna spray it again lightly and I'm gonna press my batting. And this is cotton batting. This is 100% cotton batting. Press that on. Then I'm gonna spray that and press on my fabric. And smooth it all out. You can even do pretty big quilts like this, just using the spray, which is nice. And now I'm ready to do the sewing. I have on the free motion foot, and I like to use a darker thread for the outline of the rose, and then I'll use a lighter thread for the uh, background stitching. That way, the rose shows up nicer, and the background doesn't detract from it. So I'm gonna set up the machine for free motion quilting by touching the free motion button. And I can tell I'm in free motion because I have a picture of the foot that's on the machine right there on the screen. I like to bring up my bobbin thread first. And I do that by dropping the needle, picking up the needle, and then I can just grab that bobbin thread. After I've done a few stitches, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that thread so it won't be in my way. And then I'm ready to do my sewing. And I'm just gonna sew on all of these lines. When all the details are done, it just really makes that stuffing stand out. 
Now this one I'm gonna have to go back, you know, because it's got some wandering lines, I have to travel a little over it. Traveling means that you're stitching over the same lines to get to another place in the, in the design. So I have to travel over here to get to there. And then I can start moving it. Now when you're in free motion, the thing about free motion is that the size and direction of every single stitch is totally up to you. You don't have your feed dogs up. It takes a little practice to get good at free motion, but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth putting the time in. You might wonder what these black bats are in my hand. They're called bat scooters, and I use them instead of gloves to help me move the quilts through the machine. And I like it because I don't have to put a lot of pressure on them, and so they help me move them through. But I think anything that you want to use, gloves will work, you know, those will work fine. But your hands tend to get dry and slip, and so I think you need something to help you get the quilts through the machine. I think that I've probably done enough of this sewing. I have one that the rose is all complete, so I can show you how I finish the piece with the stippling. Also the knee lift, you might notice that I'm not touching anything to bring the presser foot up. I'm using a knee lift on the machine, and the knee lift operates the presser foot, it raises and lowers it, and I love that because it's my third hand. When I have scissors in one hand and thread in the other, that knee lift can be my third hand. I was talking to someone who told me that the knee lift will save you 20% of your sewing time if you can get used to using it. Now here's the rows that I've already, already done. I'm going to do the stippling in the background. Now normally when I do background stitching, like stippling or any other background stitching, I switch to a lighter thread color. And the reason I do that is I don't want the stippling to distract from the main part of my work. But I'm not going to do that today because I want you to be able to see my stippling. So instead of going to a lighter thread that you might possibly not be able to see, I'm going to stay with the thread that I already have on the machine. So I'm gonna bring up my bobbin thread again, and then I'm gonna stitch just a little bit along the design just for a few stitches, just to anchor my threads. And then I'm ready to do my stippling. The bats are gonna help me steer it, and stippling is very small. You know, classic stippling, you don't have more than a quarter of an inch between your areas of stitching, you know, your lines of stitching. And you want it very curvy, and you don't want it ever to cross over itself. But you know, if yours crosses, is anybody really gonna see it? I don't think you need to worry too much about that. So I would stipple all around my flower. We could also do other stitches rather than doing the stippling. We could do what's called pebbling. Pebbling is little circles, and I like to make them varying sizes so they kind of look like beach rocks, but it also would make the work look very nice and flat that would help pop out that trapunto. Another thing you could do in the background would be a stitch called headbands. Again, done very small very small. Practicing, I think you need to practice a few hours, but you know, I practiced on charity quilts. I did a lot of charity quilts for my guild, and that's how I got all of my practice in. And then I just went on to feeling really confident about doing my own quilts. So this is showing you a new, easy way to do trapunto so that you can add some beautiful stuffed effect to your work. It just really gives it a nice highlight and shows off beautiful fabric.